Planning your next post-COVID vacation? Be prepared with the help and expert advice of the Travel Guys. Hello and welcome, I'm Mike Hogan and welcome to the Travel Guys, a weekly show on what's happening with travel around the world and locally. And today I'm delighted to have him as my guest, Mr. Graham West, uh, the General Manager of New Zealand for Cook Islands Tourism. Welcome, Graham. Great to have you along. Thank you. Love to have you here. Before we're going to, we're going to talk, uh, we're going to talk the Cook Islands. Obviously, that's why Graham's with us. And Graham's got a wealth of information. to Talk about the best places to go, when to go, what to see, etc. Well, Graham. We're nearly there. Can I congratulate you and say we're just about there? Well, <laughs> uh, not quite. No. We're hoping for the 1st of May. Yep. Uh, Prime Minister Mark Brown, Cook Islands Prime Minister, has said that that's when the Cook Islands will be ready to open. And that's what we're targeting. We just need the New Zealand government to give their approval and then hopefully we'll be underway. OK, I've heard the 8th of May being mentioned, but as you say, it's really... Yeah, I think, but, but I, I so believe, though, with Australia opening, it, it's just a no-brainer to me that the Cooks must follow suit. It's just making sure that everything is health-wise, that we can make sure that any guest or locals are, are safe and comfortable. Uh, and I think by I think by early to mid-May, we'll be fine. And I believe, I've talked, talked, talked to friends who are travel agents, and they say the demand is there. It's pent up, and people are just itching to get away. It, and it is. To me, the Cooks is just such a perfect destination particularly with winter coming up. Yep, 100%. And we've got a lot to talk about. Just before we go on there, can I just mention a couple of things to visitors, um, to listeners, beg your pardon. The opening of the bubble to Australia, it's very exciting and it is great news. And again, I mentioned about travel agent friends of mine just swamped with bookings, but just a couple of things to bear in mind. And this is a strong recommendation from our PM herself and from other people and the airlines. Do be aware that there are some hooks there. If something happens and you're over in Australia and there is an outbreak, you've got to be prepared for a 14-day um, self-isolation, not even self-isolation, or into um, covered isolation here or in Australia. And the, no, the travel insurance companies won't be covering you for that. So just be aware that that is one small hitch. Another one is, which I was only made aware of today, Western Australia hasn't opened. And there's a tremendous amount of Kiwis with associations to WA. And I think that was, was quite a surprise to me because they've had a very, very small incidence of COVID. Perhaps that's the reason why they've kept it away from New Zealanders. And um, the other thing I think is interesting that Air New Zealand are recommencing services to Hobart and to Adelaide. Now, the last time they flew to, no, it wasn't in New Zealand, it was Trans-Australian Airlines a hundred years ago, flew from Hobart to Christchurch on a twice-week, twice-fortnightly service. So interesting to see that is opening up as well. So it's all going to be going for Australia, but well, we're not talking about Australia today, we're going to be talking about Cook Islands. Great to have on the show, Grand. Before we start, how did you get involved in Cook Islands tourism? Well, let me think. I started in tourism when I was 21 years old, when I uh, was working in a bank and realised that wasn't quite for me. And um, I took a job with Newman's Tours Newman's in those Coach days, Tours, which yeah. you'll be familiar with. Yep. You know, at that time they were the, the leading tour company in New Zealand yep. and then had motorhomes and things. So I worked for Newman's. And then that just extended my career. They sent me to North America to, uh, to represent them up there. Um, and ultimately went into the hotel business for some time. Uh, Tourism Holdings I was actually with, which is, you know, Waitomo Caves yes. and, and different attractions and, and Maui and Brits Motorhomes. And, um, and then 10 years ago nearly started with Cook Islands Tourism. And what I liked was I felt a small country, I thought, you know what, you can make a difference. One person can make a difference in a, in a small destination. And I think that's why I'm still there 10 years later because I love the fact that I can see the things we do make a difference to the population and the people up there. Well, I can, I can say that in the dealings I've had with you over the years, I can reiterate that you definitely have made a difference. Oh, thank you very much. Pleasure. That's now, very kind. Okay, carrying on now. Cheers. Okay, Grant, a very obvious question because quite a few kids have been to the Coxon, but not everyone. Where exactly is it and how do we get there? Okay, it's easy to get to. Northeast of Auckland, yep. three and a half hours. So easy. Although we should talk about the dateline because we are across the dateline. So if you leave New Zealand on a Sunday morning, you'll arrive on Saturday afternoon at the Cooks. Or when you're returning home, if you leave on a Monday afternoon, you'll arrive back into New Zealand early evening. So just a little thing for people to remember when they're booking accommodation. If they're not using a travel agent, then they need to be aware that they've got to have their accommodation from the day before 
the day they leave New Zealand. And it confuses the heck out of so many people. It does. And that's why a travel agent is so important. Yeah, Things like that's that. That's very handy. I think I, I, I stand to be corrected on this, but I understand any flight with involving crossing the date line, there's up to 10 to 15% no shows. By no shows, people are not turning up or turning up 12 hours late or 12 hours early because they've been confused about the date line. And it's my pet peeve is I think all the airlines should do 24-hour clock. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, it's true. It is just so confusing, particularly and this is in New Zealand, a little dig at you, when you have an afternoon flight which says 0040 or 0415pm, I mean, just, people are so used to the 24-hour clock. If it says 0420, that's 0420 in the morning. So 0420 p.m. to me is almost an oxymoron. It's a little thing, but it does confuse a lot of people. Mm. So, and is there any, any New Zealand flights, any other carriers flying there from New Zealand? So prior to COVID, we actually had three carriers. There was Air New Zealand, Jetstar and Virgin Australia. Yep. But what's happened at the moment is Virgin at this stage won't be flying the route any longer. Uh, but we're hopeful that both Air New Zealand and Jetstar will still remain in the market. OK, but plenty of capacity, of course. There will be plenty of capacity once we get an opening date. Yeah, OK. And uh, just a smaller side at this stage, to my understanding, there's never been a case of COVID in the Cooks? Not one case of COVID at all. So, oh. you know, we've been very fortunate. As an island, we were able to close the Cook Islands border. Uh, there was nobody allowed in, whether by sea, land, air, any, any way. Right. So very fortunate, and that's why we're looking at being able to say we have a very comfortable, safe environment for, for Kiwis to come to. Great. And again, some of the things that make it special, um, one thing that I, has always appealed to me about the Cooks is the tremendous variety of accommodation. It's more so than any other island that I can think of in the South Pacific. Can you just cover off on that a bit, please? Yeah, sure. Look, it's, um, we've got anything from holiday homes or batches, as we would call them here, and most of them are on the lagoon, or a lot are on, are on the lagoon. Yes. Beautiful, they normally have stand-up paddle boards, kayaks available for you to use. Then we've got family-friendly resorts, we've got adults only, we've got deluxe villas, so there really is a really good combination and variety. When I speak to people at consumer shows, um, often they'll, if they haven't been to the Cooks, they'll say, well, why would I go there? And what I find is that when I let them know that it's so easy to get there, it's easy once you're there, it's a really relaxed environment down to earth. And one of the differences is that from other islands is that you don't stay in your resort. You actually go around and about the island. It's only 32 kilometers around. So you're only 20 minutes from anywhere by either bike or car or scooter. Well, or the bus, the, the or bus, the bus that goes yeah. clockwise or anti-clockwise. Right. So it's very easy to get around. And the nice thing is you're actually going to cafes, restaurants, beaches where the locals are. Yeah. It's, it's really like a, an annex of New Zealand, a beautiful tropical island that is part of New Zealand. A lot of the products are the same, so you go to the supermarket and get things or you go out for dinners and you'll find that a lot of the beers and wines and foods are from New Zealand. So it's, um, there's a really nice familiarity for, for Kiwis when they go there. And of course everyone speaks English too. And everybody <coughs> speaks English yeah. oh, and also the New Zealand dollar is what we use. Okay. So there is a Cook Islands currency, but predominantly it's the New Zealand dollar, so no changing of any money. Very, very easy down-to-earth destination. Right. So speaking of currency again, Graham, FPOS widely available? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Do, you, yep. do, do you recommend people take cash or just literally as I think it's always nice to have some cash, yep. but there are, um, there, there, are, there, are, there are ATM machines around the island, yep. so that makes it easy. And there's even the smaller restaurants, cafes and tour operators, yes. some of those, I imagine cash would be preferable to some of those people. Some, some of them would, but yep. they all take, they all take yeah. And speaking of cash, travel, I ask the question which people often answer, safety. You feel really safe in the, in the Cooks? Look, you know, I, it's, it's, it's always a hard one to talk about being a safe place. But, because anywhere but, in the world, yes. It, but we do, we really do feel comfortable and safe when we're there. I've been and, here a few times and I've never felt, even at night uh, after a function, I've never felt the re oh, no, remotely... Not at all, no. not at all. Yeah. Very comfortable environment. I think that's really important. Now, we mentioned, I talked about the lagoon momentary. Um, mm. Murray Lagoon, which is an iconic mm. spot on Itataki, um, beg your pardon, on Rarotonga. Um, Rarotonga. It's just a stunning spot. And that seems to be the very popular place with everyone. It, look, it, it is. And I guess when you look at the island that's 32 kilometres around, most of the accommodation is actually um, on the beachfront. Yep. But you've got most of the accommodation either on the western side or the southeastern side, which is where Murray Beach is. And I guess if you want the sunset, you go around the, yep. the western side of the island for those who like the sunrise and also like to be in an environment where there are lots of cafes and restaurants and hotels that you can walk to. Yep. So you could actually go and spend a week in Murray Beach, not eat in the same place any, say, any same day, um, 
and just walking. Whereas when you are further around the island, you do need to have some kind of vehicle in most cases to be able to move around. That's not a hardship, is it? It must, be, it must be one of the easiest places to drive or, oh, or to uh, ride. Oh, it is. it is. Or to walk for that matter. Yeah. Now, you are a fit man. I always noticed that. <laughs> have you have you run it or walked it? Or I, 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 haven't, it? I haven't run around the island. I've actually um, cycled around it. It's, yep. That's very easy because it's so flat. Yep. Um, and of course, we have the cross island walk where you can start on one side, go completely across to the other. Now, I've done that a few times. That's, that's always a heck of, heck of a hike. It's, it's beautiful. It must be steep. But it's pretty steep though, isn't it? Uh, only some parts. Okay. Reasonable right. level of fitness and you'll be okay. okay. And in fact, we, we do say to people that you can do it on your own. It is marked. Um, but there is a, a gentleman called Parr who has been in the Cook Islands. Legendary. For a lot, a Please legendary. Tell, me, tell me a little bit about Parr. Parr because... is incredible. Um, he has been doing the Cross Island Walk and taking guided groups for years and years. He's just now stopped taking them himself. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's in his 80s now. Wow. But he only just stopped doing the tours himself. Um, but you can do it yourself or a guided one with yeah. his, his family. Is Murray the only beach on the main island? Is that where you have to go to swim? It's not no, true at all. <clears> not at all. There's, no. there's beaches the entire way around and they yeah. are all public beaches. So it's very much like New Zealand. You can go anywhere on beaches, essentially. Um, and, and that's one of the things that people like when they go there. They jump on a scooter or they have their car and they can go on a beach where there's nobody else. Yeah. Beautiful snorkeling right off the beach. And you know, most of the accommodation provides things like um, snorkel and mask. Although right now, to be fair, post COVID, we are saying to people, good idea if you bring your own of mask course. and snorkel. Of course, yeah. And the snorkeling is great. The it's sensational. Yeah. I've been just, I, what I found was extraordinary, just to go straight off the beach of a couple of resorts there. Exactly. You think the coral would be decimated, you think the fish would be, but no, it's wonderful yeah. fish life. Right. And also the whales come past from certain they spots do. too. They do, yeah. July through October. Yep. You can see the whales very clearly from yep. shore. Yeah, okay. Do they take trips out to the whales or just watch them from shore? Watching from shore for a moment. Yeah. yeah. Graham, what I found really, I really loved about the place is the genuine hospitality of the people. Mm. And I say genuine because it's, it's, a, it's a more laid back zone. Some, some countries in the world where you get off the plane and you see people descend all over you. Right. And I've found that's the opposite of the cooks. People aren't coming up and hustling you, trying to sell you yes. anything. But if you wander over and have a chat, it's like going to Taumut or going to a small town in New yeah. Zealand. Hey, mate, how's it going? And you often get that answer. Yeah, mate, good. How are you? <laughs> You're exactly right. There's no hawkers. There's nobody trying to sell you anything. In fact, it's almost the opposite. Yeah. Um, you need to sort of say, I would like that. Yeah. Um, Cook Islanders are, are very gentle natured people and they don't push themselves on anybody at all. Right. Um, what we find is there's something actually, an activity that's called the progressive dinner. And yes, I've heard about we've that. had uh, people absolutely love it. You go to several people's houses and you'll have an entree at one, main meal at another, dessert at another. They have, they take you on a coach. There's always, um, you know, some entertainment. The reviews we get on that uh, is just incredible. It's you're in people's homes, you're, you're enjoying these meals that they've produced, which are sensational. And I would recommend that to anybody who goes to the Cooks. That's great. And it's at private homes. It's not commercial private venture. Private homes, not yeah. commercial. Oh, I love that sort of thing. That really is good. Um, mm -hmm. Now, just we, the, the Cooks, of course, is not all um, Baratonga. Aitutaki has got a magical ring to it as a name and as a reputation. Um, tell us more about Aitutaki, what makes it so special. I think it is that pictures and photos don't actually do it justice. You know, a lot of places you go to, you think, oh, they look great in the picture, but not quite the same when you get there. For sure. Whereas Arataki is the complete reverse. The, the blue, the colours, the different shades of blue are just amazing on the lagoon. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things. You, I've, I've been there and you, you can't replicate what you're seeing in real life on a camera. It just doesn't do it justice. I, I can I verify that. I had one magical experience out there. I went out for a day, just for a day, which I wish it could have been a lot longer. And we called him to see an old friend um, called Thomas Kotaker. Of course, you'd know mm, Thomas. It was a little, little, very, very casual, basic little resort, lovely mm. spot there. But it, it, it had a magical afternoon, just floating mm. in Aitutaki Resort. Right. Just 
there's three or four of us having a chat, a couple of locals mm. came by, we paddled ashore, had another beer and then came again and then mm. somebody came down with some sandwiches and I think about four and a half hours, we were pickled by, not pickled in the, I'm just talking about the skin, but it was just a totally magical yeah. afternoon, I'll never forget that, it must be ten years ago and here I'm telling you it was, it was last week, Look, it, that was special about Aitutaki for me. It, it really is, but you know, I think when you go to Rarotonga, you feel like you've gone back in time a little bit yeah. and then you go to Aitutaki and you've gone back even further. Yeah. It is so down to earth and relaxed and just, people go there, it's very much a, a couples and sort of honeymoon destination. Yeah. It is ideal for those people just wanting to chill out. But now in saying that, to spend time on the lagoon, either on the Vaca cruise that goes out for the day or taking a private charter, you know, you can do everything from snorkeling, scuba diving, scuba diving outside the lagoon, of course, yeah. uh, spearfishing outside the lagoon, water skiing, uh, kite surfing, so there's a huge number of things you can do there, but a lot of people do go there just, just, to, like, to just <laughs> like you did, just to wind down, yeah. sit in the lagoon, the beautiful warm water, yep. and just relax. It was a very special time, it really was. Mm. But the other, um, there are some number of other islands as well, very uncommercialised, and the one that's intrigued me, and I've never been to it, is Atu. Mm -hmm. Have you been? You actually pronounce that very well. A lot of people can't, it's, it's spelled A-T-I-U, <laughs> yeah. and it is pronounced Atu, well yeah. done. Um, look, I have been there. It's um, totally uncommercial, it, I believe. It, oh, it, it's it's not your quintessential tropical island like Arataki and Rarotonga are. It is more of a back to nature. Um, it is very basic. It's got uh, amazing burial caves and also some caves where there's a kopeka bird which uh, flies by sonar. Wow! So the stalactites that come down in the cave, they're avoiding them by clicking. Wow. And you actually go into the cave and you can hear them clicking so they can actually manoeuvre through the cave yeah. right to the back of it. And there is accommodation there, but I believe yes, it's quite is. basic, but still oh, comfortable. It's, it's lovely. It, yeah. it is actually, it's quite a unique experience to, f to spend two or three nights on. Yeah. And it's only a 45 minute flight from Rarotonga. And how many islands in total? There's 15 in total. So that's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. That's 15 mm -hmm. inhabited islands. Uh, not all inhabited. Not all. Okay. Yeah. But still, and Emily, well, there's a question too. I should ask the question. What is the total population of the Cooks? It's about 14,000. Okay. And so quite, a few, quite a few here in Auckland too. Uh, quite a few. More in Auckland and more in Australia than <laughs> there are in the Cook Islands. In fact, yeah. Auckland's the biggest South Pacific country right. uh, city in the world. Right. <laughs> An average holiday there, um, you're talking, I'm just backtracking again. You mentioned mm. couples, but of course, it's a great family destination as well. Yeah. And I think, that, what, I think that is really important to stress. You've mentioned couples. Fantastic, and you've got mm -hmm. wonderful villa style, mm -hmm. total privacy. I've seen some of the villas there that are just breathtaking, mm -hmm. and you've got your own private pool, right. and, you've got your own, and you can even get caterers in if you want to go that That's extent. Right. Yes. Um, through to this really great family resorts with right. lots of activities for the kids. Correct in saying that it's great for both markets. Hundred percent correct, Mike. That um, you know we've got three. The three largest hotels on the island of Rarotonga are all family friendly, yeah. and they they cater to families exceptionally well with kids clubs and and and, and multiple things to do. Um, one thing I should mention is that those are our, when I say three biggest hotels, we're not as big as the hotels in a lot of the other islands oh, or really? other places. Yeah. We don't have any internationally branded hotels on the Cooks and most of ours are smaller, anywhere from 30 to 60 rooms yep. as opposed to 300 rooms that you find in some other places. Um, our three family friendly, the, the big properties, um, are you know around sort of 250 uh, rooms or 150 for one of them, so not quite as big as is, is some of the other ones. But still got everything at all the activities. Everything that people want. Yeah. Kids and just kids love being in that environment. And they kids, kids just yeah. thrive. In fact, an interesting I've noticed that a real uh, a, um, a surge in the intergenera intergenerational mm -hmm. market mum, mm -hmm. dad, and, and grandparents yes, and is. kids. And that's where I know one of the properties there, the Edgewater, had three bedroom villas. And it was yes. perfect for that market. And it was so popular. Yeah. Mum and dad and the grandkids. Grandkids mm -hmm. growing along to be babysitters, of course. Correct. <laughs> and I often wonder who's paying. Right. <laughs> kids, mum, dad, yep. <laughs> grandparents. But we have seen a lot more of that. Yep. A lot more of the intergenerational travel for yep. sure. And even we find grandparents taking the kids, leaving their kids out, but taking the grandkids. So it's just, and that's, that's beautiful to yeah, see. Even better, even better. One thing that, that you don't know until you get there is just how, um, how welcoming and how laid back it is. And, yeah. and I guess I look at New Zealand you know, maybe 40, 50 years ago when you, know, you used to be able to jump in the trailer when your dad took the trailer to the tip and you'd ride in the trailer, yep. which of course we can't do that here yep. anymore. But you look at Raro and you see kids in the back of pickup <laughs> trucks on, uh, on little chairs or anything driving around the island. Yep. In fact, I was there with my daughter one time, we got caught in a massive storm. And uh, we, uh, as we were walking back to the resort, 
a truck just pulled over with a couple of kids in the back under a tarpaulin and they said jump in where are you staying we'll take you to wherever you're going uh, so we jumped on the back of the pickup truck it was one of the highlights for my daughter of our trip uh, just little things like that yeah. and she also said to me you know what dad it feels like there's no rules <laughs> that's and when she said that I thought that's sort of how we grew up yeah you know um, whereas, you know, my daughter, who's now nearly 15, is, is not growing up quite that same way. And she spent six weeks actually living in Rara with me when I was working up there at oh, one point. Oh, wow. That and it's one of the highlights, again, of yeah. her life so far, yeah. because she would go to school, they were barefoot, yep. little sundresses, they just, it just was back to basics. Yeah. And it is delightful. It is one. I, I love that. I mean, I, just slightly different. A friend of mine has, was posted to Nui for three years, and his three-year-old kid, by the time he'd been at school for six months, he's nearly fluent in Nui. And kids right. just soak it up, don't mm. they, that whole thing. And right. It's really special and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm. No, I, um, oh, the other thing, too, is I'm a keen golfer. There's a nice little golf course there, too. There is. It's only nine holes, I know. But, <laughs> but you can go around it twice. It's fun. It was the social, there was a great atmosphere. It, I just had more laughs on that golf course. Yeah, it is. Well, it might have been the beers afterwards. I'm not quite, maybe a mix yeah. of both, but it was, yeah. it was really enjoyable. I really loved that. And of course, the other thing that everyone does is go and you sit at the end of the runway when the yes. planes come in. Yes. Not, are we supposed to? Is it all right? Is oh, it's cool? fine. You can. Yeah, you know, can. But they come over the seawall. It is actually quite cool to stand wow. there and watch a, a, a Dreamliner or a 777 go right across your head. It's, um, it, and it feels like it's six inches from your it head. It does. Yeah. yeah. No, that's really yeah. special. Yeah, no, I think, um, Graham, it's been one of these, it's one of these places that um, I think that. Well, and just occurring on what you said, for, uh, I noticed what I do laugh about when I've been to Rarotong is you can always tell the first time arrivals in the hotel where you're staying. Where's that drink? I ordered it five minutes ago. You know, I didn't want a gin and tonic. I ordered a vodka and tonic. God's sake. Two days later, gin, right. vodka, doesn't matter. No, it doesn't really matter. I'm here. I'm yeah, relaxing. People chill out very quickly. Yeah. And package holidays, there's plenty of other options available. Lots of options. Yeah. So all the yeah. tour companies. Graham, it, 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 who knows what the future is going to hold? We none of us mm. do, um, but I surely hope that that the the current ma ma what what makes the cooks magic won't be lost in the future. I mean, we, we're not going to see a Waikiki there along Murray Beach ever, are I, we? No. I don't think you'll see that at all. As no. I say, most of our properties are you know somewhere between twenty and, and thirty or thirty five rooms. Yep. I don't foresee that changing. No. Uh, in, in the near future at no. all. And even if one of the big chains come in, they're not going to build a 400 room property. It would be totally meaningless to try and do so, I'm quite sure. We've got the magic, we just need to keep it the way it is. Oh, I and I do. think yeah. that's why Kiwis come back in their droves. Great. Well, for people who want more information, go see your travel agent. But just about all the travel agents are well versed on the cooks mm. and can help you with that. For lots of, sorry, for general information, cookislands.travel, is that the that's website? Cookislands.travel, and that's got everything they want to find out about the Cook Islands. Great. Thanks again for coming, Graham. Oh, you're very Great welcome. You. Thank, Thank you. you.